Growing up in uh, Western Kansas, you grew up to love the outdoors. We hunted, fished, and there was, you just loved to be in the outdoors, the wildlife. Uh, it, it was a part of your being. So I moved to Manhattan to get a graduate degree in architecture, and I found out that I might be able to do, use some of my talents to enter a competition, which was a new series called the Kansas Wildlife Arts Series. So a good friend of mine, Charlie Lee, who was with uh, Bob Henderson at uh, Kansas State in the biology department said, you ought to travel with me to the Cons of Prairie. So we traveled to the Cons of Prairie, uh, south of Manhattan on that beautiful landscape. And uh, we took pictures in a blind of, of the uh, greater prairie chickens booming out on the Lex and uh, had a substantial amount of photos to work with, but they are so, beautifully detailed their feathers and, and how ornate they are and I wanted to capture the setting. I put in a little windmill back here that actually existed there in the Flint Hills, put this together and called this Kansas Daybreak, sent it off and uh, got the call and uh, it became the uh, Wildlife Art Series winner, the first one for me and it also became the first stamp to be created. This was the very first stamp competition I won. And it, created, it made me Kansas Wildlife Artist of the Year. And it absolutely catapulted my career from the start. Because in the early 80s and, and up through the 90s, uh, the big thing in, uh, in wildlife art was conservation stamps, conservation entities, uh, but the conservation stamps, if you did a conservation stamp, for instance, if you win the federal duck stamp, it absolutely cements you as uh, your career plus a big package go, comes along with it to fund it, and uh, it's very special. And those stamps are, are quite collectible, and uh, we're very proud to have this be a part of the uh, fest this year. I find it more workable to actually take all my photographs, pictures, shots, and I uh, use those as a collaboration to draw. You never find a real photograph that is spot on. You can, but it's, it's, you know, it's not very often. But I usually change them ad and then put in the scene in the background. And uh, you're right, when you start doing the details, and I started off early in my uh, career, uh, very, very detailed. And once you start doing the detail, you're not going to loosen up. Everybody appreciates that. And I do too. Uh, but you really got to get into it and, and put even the little uh, feather, you know, the feather uh, parts of it and uh, really put out, try to put out the color changes in the feathers and the aura and the essence of, of the birds to match the scenery with that incredible landscape we have in this state. But uh, to be able to actually set uh, in that blind uh, on the Kanza was quite unique. And you know, it's not only the attitude of the birds, it's the history that you're feeling. How many years has this happened? On this lake, you are seeing one that has been, uh, one uh, dancing ceremony that has happened for years, centuries possibly, and uh, it's quite, quite special. It's all attitude. It's the attitude of being in that blind, the attitude of being on that wonderful, cool, crisp morning with the incredible birds. And there's an attitude to those birds, an attitude that you try to feel, and that's what you try to capture and all that, just like you're saying. Interestingly enough, I always get asked, what do you start with in a painting? I always, almost always start with the eyes, attitude. It gives me the starting point to go from and give you the attitude of what that bird you can sense it, you can feel it, and then you can go from, from that starting point, at least for me. You gotta know the skeletal, the muscle parts of any creature that you do, and you can really bring the vibrancy of them out in that. Even the smallest, say a twitch in the neck, or in the sack, that, like you're talking here, can make all the difference. Uh, the greater prairie chickens are, are as you know, uh, larger, birds, but they've got the beautiful golden sack, and uh, that really captures this painting. Overall, that color captured it all, even in the uh, sun up and the whole works, and in the back, and it just brings it to pop. Uh, some of the folks that would come out from 
uh, Colorado and they would do a ceremonial dance for the Native Americans and there was always the chicken dance, well the prairie chicken dance, you know, the prairie chicken. And they would always, but it, it always captured your imagination. But to actually see that with your own eyes is uh, quite, it, you don't forget it, do you? It's quite special.